In this video, I give you five birding tips that no one talks about coming up right after this. Hello guys, my name is Eddie. I'm a wildlife biologist and not only do I like to teach you about nature, but I like to teach you how to enjoy nature. So subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. This video is a follow-up video to a recent video I had, which I went through 15 tips for beginner birders. If you haven't seen it, go check it out because not only is it good for beginners, but there's some good tips in there for people who are more experienced as well. But in this video, I'm going through five tips that I feel like a lot of people haven't even thought of. My first tip is to pre-focus your binoculars. So let's say you see a turkey vulture two miles away, you focus your binoculars, get a good look at it, and then right after that you go walking through the forest and you know you're gonna see small songbirds no more than like 20 or 30 yards away from you in the branches right up above you. After seeing that vulture, you wanna at least change back your focus to a decent ballpark range that you know you're gonna work with in the forest because the less time you spend focusing your binoculars when you got your eye on a bird, that is less time that that bird has to fly away before you can actually get a good look at it and identify it. My next tip is to use what I like to call the 80-20 rule. And what the 80-20 rule is, is you just have to know that 80% of the birds that you see are only going to be 20% of the species that you could see. So basically most of the individual birds out there are comprised of just a relatively small number of species. And obviously it's not always 20 to 80% or even 10 or 90%. It's obviously much different wherever you go in the world. But just that general idea holds true. So just know that if you're trying to identify a bird and it's in the guidebook and it can either be a rare species or a common species, it's probably the common species. To experienced birders, that might seem obvious, but many beginners tend to forget that. My next tip relates to counting and estimating numbers of individual birds, which is important because I think it's something everyone should do, especially when they're taking part in citizen science and entering data. And to eBird, you should try to get in the habit of counting and estimating the number of individuals that you see, not just the number of species. So you should just know that people tend to overestimate groups of large birds, and they tend to underestimate groups of small birds. So for example, people are more likely to overestimate uh, the number of individuals in a flock of geese, and they're more likely to underestimate the number of individuals in a flock of starlings. My next tip is if you are doing birding from a car and you spot a bird, do not get out of the car until you have a great look at that bird and you get all the photos you want to because at least in my experience, that bird is way more likely to fly away when you get out of the car. I personally find that most birds, once I stop the car, most birds don't fly away. And they allow me enough time at least to get a good look at it. But the moment that I open the door, they fly away. Usually they fly away. Sometimes, depending on the individual, they won't. But you should just know that. And my fifth tip is a tip that I think a lot of birders already know, but I just forgot to mention it in my first birding tips video. And I don't want to cause controversy here, but it's to use pishing to attract birds. Now, I will stress that you want to do this only in certain situations and do it with caution. And first I'll explain what exactly it is. It's kind of weird, you know, you'll get a lot of people looking at you in weird ways when you do this. But basically you just go like this, and some birds, especially a lot of songbirds, will actually come towards you and uh, whether they're alarmed or curious, they'll come near you, get a look at you. Sometimes they'll stick around for a while. Now again, I wanna stress that you should be very careful when you do this. As a rule of thumb, and just to be safe, never do it on a species that is of concern. So just do it to, you know, species that you know, their conservation status is really good. And also just really don't do it that much. You know, only do it in those situations where you just know that you absolutely need a better look at a bird, whether it is taking a photo or on a tour or whatever. I have not looked at the latest research in the past couple of years before filming this video, but actually I think that would be a pretty interesting idea for a video to see how playbacks and pishing affects birds because last I looked, there really wasn't a whole lot of science on that. So if you guys think that's a cool topic for a video, uh, let me know and post in the comments below. So guys, that's all I have for today. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you have any birding tips that you think you know that other people haven't thought of, feel free to post them in the comments below. On this channel, I do app and gear reviews, natural history lessons, ecotourism travel guides, and a lot more that have to do with exploring nature and wildlife. Remember that exploring nature is always an adventure. Peace out.